Now we're gonna start off today with a two inch brush and a little bit of clear gel and white paint. And that'll be mixed to about 50-50 mix right there. And just somewhere up here in the sky area, I'm gonna coat my canvas with this clear gel and white. I'm not gonna go down very far. And I'm gonna take some of our white, some of our blue, very simple sky today. Blue and white, <laughs> anybody can do this. It's straightforward. And I'm gonna place this blue and white sky, which I think will be actually a very nice contrast. You know, against all of our autumn colors, we are gonna have quite a few autumn colors. Now I've got a one inch brush here. And I'm gonna take, uh, let's just start with some yellow ochre, red. There's some of our white. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw color up here, mush it together and see what happens. That sounds pretty, pretty good. What could possibly, you know, go wrong there? Just throwing stuff up and hoping that it comes out there. And see, I'm just picking up each time I go down, I'm picking up a little bit of a different color. What is that gonna represent? Well, it represents nothing yet, but hopefully toward the end, it'll look kind of like leaves and stuff falling there on the, on the ground. Of course, this is gonna be a cliff face, rocks. Now, as we go up into these trees, let's actually sprinkle some of this color down. I'm just tapping. All this is gonna be fairly solid. I'm gonna take one of my shop towels, which of course you get in the automotive section. You can go to the auto parts store and get one if you really can't find them, but you can even find them online. Or a cotton rag will work. But I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna dabble like this. I'm going to, two things this does. One, it removes oil from the canvas, which is good. But what it really does, it grinds that paint into the texture, into the weave of the canvas to where it won't uh, slip around when we go to add details, such as, you know, if we need highlights, which we may not, because I'm seeing highlights in here, see those? Automatically, but tree trunks and whatnot. Now I'm gonna go back to that one inch brush and that purple color that we had a moment ago. I'm gonna just use this to tap in some dark purple shadows here along the side and the side. And to tell you the truth, I can go ahead and cover that tree. Okay, and then going upward, let's get rusty colors going. So this is just our yellow, yellow, red, and just rusty colors. It could be kind of anything, mix it loosely. I don't need anything, you know, mixed too well. All right, and I almost wanna see that darker up in here. So let's take some brown, because I like that dark over there. Let's take some brown, black, and let me just bring in some dark. I know it doesn't look like anything yet. You gotta just follow the process of it. There it is, that's pretty. Okay, that's pretty much it. You know what, while we're, while we're working in our shapes and our tones, I'm gonna take some more of our red, umber, black. And I'm just gonna go ahead and get some of that here. I don't wanna cover my log just yet. I'm gonna leave that log kind of showing. Okay. And then right down here, get some brown and black in that corner. So I took just a second here and I put out some more paint. So I've got my reds and my yellows back. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and let's take this Felbert brush. I'm gonna go ahead and paint in my rocks here. So for that, I'm gonna take some umber, but it's mostly gonna be blue and red. Create a bit of a purpley color because I wanna show distance here. This is a very shallow painting. Sometimes we'll paint and, and in your painting, you know, it'll, you'll see hundreds of miles away to that mountain range that's so far away. And that's not this way today. You could stand here and you could throw a rock to the other side of the painting and that's it. So we're gonna force some perspective by using colors and contrast. Uh, we're gonna overemphasize that this is in the background and overemphasize that this is in the foreground. That way we get some amount of depth. But so far, so good. That'll probably work. Let me set that brush down. I'll just grab another filbert brush. And let me take some, some of our cad yellow, yellow ochre. And I'm gonna sprinkle in, you know, a little red. Okay. And that just fills in for me pretty much all that I need done here. Over here, might as well, since we're filling in, that's even some of my original tree color there. 
a little darker. It's on the palette, so I might as well use it. Yeah, see that? Very good. Now we're gonna wipe all that off, and I think what we are left with at the end of the day is gonna be actually pretty interesting. Now I've got my blue shop towels, and I'm going to, I'm gonna start right up here at the top, and we're gonna wipe away a lot of this extra paint. By wiping it away, I mean I'm not scrubbing, I'm actually dabbing, because if you scrub it, it'll become blurry. If you just dabble it, then it'll be, then it'll be texturized and actually add something to the painting. Isn't that nice? <laughs> Look at that, our sky, that big sky we painted, we're gonna have about three square inches showing at the end of the day. Wow. There you go. Aren't you glad we didn't paint clouds? Now I'm going to, I'm gonna take one more of my shop towels here. And I'm going to actually just lay it up on the, and you, you don't have to do it this way, you could rub this, but I wanna show you this technique. You can lay your shop towel up here on these rocks and press it down just like this. And I'm gonna walk away for about five, 10 minutes, probably no longer than 10 minutes. Set a timer, come back and peel that off. And what that'll have done is it'll absorb the oil into the paper towel and then you can highlight without any, any mud. So now I'm ready to take this shop towel off and you'll see, look at, look at the underside there, you'll see all that paint that was absorbed into it. Now, this will act a lot more like a dry canvas. I mean, it's obviously not, not dry, but you know, you can even see this little glob of paint, you know, it's far from dry, but it's stickier and that's gonna make it much easier. So, let me go ahead and grab a three quarter brush and let's begin to work on, on some of the highlights. I'm just gonna take some white and umber, white and umber, and just a little bit of our purple. If you don't have that, it's just red, blue and white. A little bit of our leftover purple there. I'm looking for a color that's not too, too bright, but yeah, still bright enough to show, you know, it's not as, it's not the brightest highlight you can do. I don't want to bring that too far forward, but right up in here and let's go ahead and just place on, oh, that's pretty. The indication here of some of these rocks. If this doesn't work for you, you must leave your shop towel on a little longer. There you go. There, that, that'll work. There's a rock there. Of course, this is gonna end up being kind of bushes or something under it or just grass, really, just grass. You can come back in and place in an extra shadow if you need to. Just reloading, same color. Our highlights coming through obviously like this, you can tell that now up to this point, you pretty much didn't need to deal with that, but now you gotta make a choice. Get that hair off of it. Okay. You know, some of these can be pulled out with a liner brush. You don't feel, you know, don't feel the need, like you've gotta go in and get it all figured out with this brush. Okay, lots and lots of trees. Just a few over here, and then we'll probably be done with that. And I can just put a little bit of a highlight on top of some of this. Now this one here comes down further. I'm making a choice. Why does it come down further? I don't know. <laughs> just It just looks like it needs to. Because, here's why it looks like it needs to, I guess. Because it, it just brings more layers in. Oh, there's another one right here. Boom. Again, with the layers, isn't that nice? Yeah, that'll work, that'll work, that'll work. Now continuing with the same idea, I'm gonna actually continue with my yellow ochre. I'm gonna place in the highlight side to this stump right here. It kind of comes up like this, okay? And then the shadow side with the brown and black again and the red, it'll be here. And of course, this is gonna be co totally covered on this side with, with grass, you know, it'll be like this, all covered, see that? So I don't know that it makes a whole lot of difference how you end it over there, because it's not gonna be seen. Just continuing here, nice and dark, fairly big. It needs to be proportional. It needs to look like it's here in the foreground. Definitely needs to be big enough. All right, that'll work. 
That was quick and easy. Now, take that brush and put it down, grab some shop towels, or a shop towel. And I'm going to wipe this off, starting at the top and just dragging down. Okay, flip this over. Do it again. Repeat this step as many times as you need until that is wiped thoroughly away and you don't have all that loose oil paint. Okay. And just some straight yellow ochre. Hit in here are just a couple of little bits. Now let me stand back and take a look, make sure this is what I like. Yeah, that's fine. You can work with that white brush a little, blend some of these a little more. Okay. And then down here, a little of our red, yellow ochre, Hansa yellow. Tap it. Crunch that brush open. And I want to begin to place in the feeling of, hey, there's a little something, grass or whatnot, just on these rocks. Remember, we soaked a lot of the oil out of these rocks so I can do this. If you skip that step thinking, oh, I don't need to do that. Well, <laughs> you're going to wish you did. Right here is where it makes all the difference. So continuing with the fan brush, I'm going to take some more of that, just the same old color we had right over there, and just sprinkle it, just sparkle it right here along some of these trees, which you know you would expect to have some little red into it just to change the flavor of it a little. And again, sp sprinkle that in. Sprinkle it in. Okay, that'll work. Subtle. Subtle is okay. Some yellow ochre, more, more of the yellow ochres there in it. Oh, that's pretty, right? Oh yeah, I'm kind of growing out from behind that tree. That's interesting, same color. A little more red. Why would you ever go back and grab the exact same color when you can change it just a little? Okay, how about some red red? I mean, really red. Is that too red? It's probably too red. <laughs> Let's not do that. There we go. Pull some of that orange in there. The more color you can put in your tree, really the better it's going to look. You cannot overdo color. You're not going to do it. Here's some, now I'm going back to my yellow ochre and white mix, so I just have to remix it. Because I want to see a, a crisp highlight right there. I'm starting to see glop the paint up. I've got a lot of paint in that brush. Nothing really goes in front of this tree except a couple of little pieces of grass with the liner brush. So you can actually put this on as thick as you want. You can lay it on with a palette knife, it wouldn't change a thing. Okay. Let me stand back. Oh, that's kind of neat, isn't it? Look at all the colors that I've built in there. It makes a big difference. There's some, um, that's just leftover uh, brown. It's just red, yellow ochre, cad yellow, and umber and white. Just leftover from the trees. Basically, it's the same colors we were highlighting the trunk with. I just put some umber. So I've got the three-quarter brush, the one I was using there just a moment ago. I'm going to take, that's my same bluish purple. I'm going to take mostly just blue and white. Mostly blue and white. And, and with that blue and white, I'm just going to place a little bit of that right there. That's enough. <laughs> yep, that's it. Now, I actually set that brush down. We may want it for something else. I'm going to take my other three-quarter brush, the one I had for light. And I'm going to begin to smear in just color, whatever color. Whatever color was in my brush, which was this highlight color from, okay, if you need a color, it was yellow ochre, a little bit of red and white. Take some umber, black, red. But you know what? This is, this is free and loose and you just, whatever, whatever colors come out, you work with them. Don't fight your color. I think so often, you know, people say, they ask me, you know, how do you learn color mixing and you know, color mixing doesn't come naturally, whatever they say. And, and I say the biggest thing is that the reason it's not coming natural is because you're fighting the color. There, I grab some, some black to throw in. If you don't fight the color and you just say, okay, whatever's coming out of that brush, I'm going to some way work with it. All of a sudden, oh, it unlocks all kinds of possibilities. And I'm just, just dipping the tip of my brush in that paint 
and I'm barely touching the canvas. Barely touching it. See that just to get myself a little bit of what feels like some amount of reflection, ripple, match what's there. I see more yellow ochre on this side. Now let me grab my little quarter inch flat brush and I want to create, there's just some brown, black, a little bit of red and blue, brown, black, red, blue, a little touch of white. So I've got kind of a rock color going. I want to put in just a couple of rocks here at the foreground. I would expect to see that, bring that one down a little bit. And then boom, for, well, foreground, really what I should have said is shoreline rocks. I see that, just a little darkness. Could you highlight these? Yeah, will we? No, probably not, we'll see. I don't know if they need it or not. I won't know until I get them in. You could use pure white, but why? Wow, I just think it'd be too much, too much. There, just a little, little ripple. I have this bad habit, of, I paint on the left side so you can see, but I will, I'll make that water slopey if I don't stand directly in front, okay? And then if I just want a little ripple on that water, I can have it, and this looks like the wind's coming through this. There wouldn't be much wind in the forest, but there would be a little coming through that little canyon. So we're gonna do something that seems like it's out of order and doesn't make any sense, but I'm gonna explain as I go. I'm gonna take some of our titanium white and our yellow ochre. All right, a little bit of our Hansi yellow, but not too much. I'm gonna paint in this tree trunk. Could have done it while I was painting that tree, but that would have made too much sense. But here's the thing, okay. So I know that I haven't painted these grasses yet. And I know when I go to paint these grasses, I'm gonna mess up this highlight just a little. At least that's what I'm thinking I will. That's probably what's gonna happen. So you would think, well, come on, why wouldn't you paint your grass first and then do the tree after we're working from the back moving forward like you would typically do. Here's the thing, I'm gonna do this grass with a liner brush and my paint's gonna be thin. And I'm concerned that if I get too much of that thin paint over this tree trunk, when I go to do the tree, it's gonna become kind of muddy. So rather than doing that, I'm gonna do this tree first. And if I have to come back and if I've got to repair this tree, I can do that more easily than trying to paint over a bunch of thin paint that I accidentally get laid down on this tree. I hope it makes sense, but that's the idea. Now I've got a cup here of thin linseed oil. I'll just stick it right there. And let me take my liner brush and let's go into something light. You know what? I don't typically mix with the palette knife for liner brush work, but today yeah, I'm gonna definitely do that. There's some, <laughs> some of our Hansa yellow and our white and a little tiny bit of yellow ochre and white. I just got too much to mix with that, with the liner brush alone. See that? So I've got that bright mix and I've got that golden mix. Let's start with the, uh, let's start with the bright mix. So I'm gonna get two or three scoops of oil. You may not be able to see my palette at all times because I don't want the oil to fall on my foot. Number one, I don't want paint on my foot. Number two, it won't do me any good down there. So I'm just gonna get two or three brush loads just until it begins to flow on the palette and then I'll use it right up here to create. Now wait, before we go, don't go anywhere. Just stay right there. I don't see this area here that's got canvas holes. That's gonna cause me a problem. I do not wanna see canvas holes. There you go. Wow, that's pretty, isn't it? Uh, I'm just gonna have to spend a few minutes here. This is not uh, super fast, but it does look super good. <laughs> that's a little silly, but you know what I mean. Okay, back to my darker kind of yellow ochre mix. And I'm gonna try, try to just tie these two together. Okay, now we still haven't done, we still haven't done our dark ones. Gotta go do those dark ones, but let me just stand back. Wow, look at that. Yeah, this will all get broken up better too when we go to do the dark ones. Okay, a little more of my yellow ochre. Yeah, I just need something back here. Pretty. Now one of the last things really we need to do is come up here and, and put a little highlight on our trees. For that, I'm gonna take just some of what we've got left over, a little uh, umber into our yellow ochre and white mix. I don't need anything that stands out too, too much, but well, that's not bad right there. You know, I, 
more and more I'm becoming a fan of using my liner brush to add a lot more details than I used to. Used to be I put in a, a little token stick on twigs and branches and a couple grasses and a flower that, in the foreground, that'd be it. But now I'll do entire fences and now I'm talking just highlight and tree trunks and stuff with the liner brush. And I'm like I said, I'm liking it. I just something about it lays the paint on sharp. Nice. So you could do this again, just like every other step that we've done here toward the end. You can do this all day long. I'm going to have to wrap it up here very soon, but it gives you a great indication. You can take it further if you need to in your specific painting. You may need to. But it gives you a, a good starting place. Just a couple back up in here. You would expect to see them growing back up on the, the forest floor back there. Out from those leaves and bushes. Now I've got a, a crumpled up shop towel here and you can guess I'm going to just just dabble. Look at this. And because that paint's thin, it lifts right off. I'm just going to soak that paint out. So that soak it. And then what that does is it makes it look like my trees are buried in the forest, not sitting on top of the forest. You could use something like a fan brush and hit it with paint, but this works just as well. And I don't have to add any paint. Therefore, I don't have to get any mud. To me, it just makes a difference. Look at this. The last thing brings it from brings the background from, well, you know, it looks like you did that pretty quick to, hey, that's not a bad background. It wouldn't re in reality, we did it pretty quick. So there you go. Could you go further? Yes. Should you? Maybe. But for me, I'm going to have to call it quits right about here. Well, that about wraps up our painting for today. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing it. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs and Brushline. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you're not already and click the like button. That helps me out a lot. Stick around, watch a couple more videos and stay inspired. Mm -hmm.